joining us for Classics Quarterly Town Call. We sincerely appreciate you spending time with us today. The town call meetings are our opportunity to discuss trends, products, and designs from the previous quarter and to peek into the future. It's also our hope that by sharing this information and hearing your insight that we will be more productive, more profitable, and a little wiser. I'm Mel White. I co-manage Classic Exhibits with Kevin Carty, who is here as well. We're joined by Jim Shellman, who's the GM of Classic Rentals, and Jen Labers and Reed Sherwood, Regional Sales Managers for Classic and Classic Modul. Please note that your microphones are muted in order to minim minimize background noise like phones ringing and coughing, but we want your questions and comments, so don't be shy. You can submit them during the session in the question panel. We'll answer them either during the session or at the end. It's our hope, if the technology cooperates, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, that we can selectively turn on your microphone for additional questions when you raise your hand. On behalf of the entire Class of Egypt's team, thank you for spending 45 minutes to an hour with us and your fellow distributors. Now let's get started. We'll be discussing sales trends and then 2013 predictions first. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Kevin. Um, point here, there seems to be some light at the end of the tunnel, so that's the good news. Um, I wanted to uh, share with you some, some 2012 sales trends um, to date, really through October, um, and, and what we've seen and what we've been experiencing, and then we'll move into uh, 2013. You know, the story here really has been the transition from, from uh, recovery or from recession to recovery. And like with any recovery process, it's been paced overall, with positive growth seen through the entire industry as well as in our own classic family of companies. You might remember from our last town call in the spring where we reported that an increase of sales of 22% over last year within classic exhibits and classic module, and 19% over last year in the classic rental division. Currently, we're running at about 14% increase over last year within classic exhibits and classic module, and about 12% over last year in the classic rental division. Coming out of 2011, uh, as, as we've discussed, there, there, there was some uh, significant pent-up demand in the market overall, which really positively affected our Q1 sales and gave us a great kickstart into the rest of the year. Since then, sales have been steady and increasing when compared to uh, compared month by month to 2001. The remainder of 2012 looks to be strong against last year as well, which is a, a, a good sign. November is always kind of a slow month, but um, December is already shaping up uh, very nicely. Thank you for all the new opportunities that, um, that you've all been sending us. Let's move on to uh, some projections and predictions for 2013 coming up. In sales and in service, 2013 will... Um, should continue to bring stability, modest growth, flexibility, and some new opportunities on multiple fronts. From a service standpoint, we've added two, uh, we added staff in several areas, but there's two I'd like to, to point out. Um, specifically in Q2, Q2 and Q3 of 2012, we added Jen LaBruza, the new regional sales manager, whom uh, you'll all be hearing from a little bit later. Uh, she will be, and in many cases, has actually already become familiar, a familiar face to uh, many of you or a familiar voice during your travels and calls. She's proven to be a wonderful addition to our team and yours. Cynthia Gaddis, I also want to point out, is a new project manager here at Classic Exhibits, and she's leading our setup project management department, which is um, highly regarded already. Um, but with Cynthia's gu uh, guidance and involvement, it's, it's only going to get better. We're very excited about that. There will be conti uh, 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 continue to be one of the things that we're looking at, I should say, is, is uh, 2013 looks to be uh, our end users, our combined end users, look to be doing um, and planning for more program building. Uh, folks are continuing to rebuild their trade show programs that were cut back or put on hold during 09, 10, and uh, the latter part of the uh, front part of uh, 2011. The growth, I think, will continue to be paced. But we are forecasting larger spikes within island sales as well as the classic module division, especially with the newest classic module depot recently opening in um, St. Louis, which we're all very excited about. Budgets definitely seem a lot more flexible moving into the new year. 
Um, that's always a positive indicator. Information drawn primarily from the, uh, uh, the reactions that we're seeing from Mike and Katina, quite frankly, just in their daily work. And, and, and uh, uh, I, I often give them a hard time, just uh, the smiles on their faces when they actually see the budgets that they're getting for uh, some of their, their, their uh, projects. And as they, as they call it, they said, wow, we have you know, design freedom in those dollars. This is going to lead to a continued push for more customization and design of all sizes. Again, a predictable sign of people stepping back out into their prospective markets with not only more confidence, but more money to spend. End users really seem to be wanting to step back in with a big bang overall, which is, current, which is certainly exciting and is really affording us all a lot more freedom and creativity within the design process at the front end of the project. Um, you've heard me talk a lot in the past about sort of non-trade show um, projects that we've been working on. It's been a growing um, segment of our business for the last three years in particular, um, and I'd like to address a little bit of that. This continues to be an exciting new frontier for us here at Classic, and one of the um, and one that's grown significantly in the past year once again. Thanks in large part to all of you bringing us these new opportunities and having confidence in our ability to fulfill the design and production needs, which are currently different, um, which are certainly, I should say, different than um, our traditional trade show um, uh, business. Uh, projects slotted already for 2013 include, but are not limited to, um, semi-permanent and permanent mall construction, mall kiosk construction, corporate and public area information kiosks with self-charging capabilities, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, retail fixturing, ranging, ranging from very custom for brands with, you know, 50 or less locations, uh, as well as, as, as uh, more standard retail options for big box retailers. Um, event works, such as creating large backdrops for stages, for conferencing, as well as for corporate presentations. Uh, set design and build for network television use, as well as theatrical use and a lot of interior signage. I know this now may sound simple and boring, but it's, it's not. What I'm referring to here literally is, is imagine walking in and replacing a lot of the large uh, artwork and corporate signage on the inside of, of, of big office buildings. We're seeing a lot of opportunities to do that with uh, uh, SEG graphics and our module uh, framework. Again, thanks to you all for, for all these new opportunities. They are exciting to us for sure and clearly are going to be a big part of what we're doing in 2013 here at Classic and especially within the Classic Module Division. If you've heard this before, there's a reason we sound like a broken record on the topic of hybrids. Not only are hybrid exhibit sales increasing, but the designs and the price points are expanding as well. For example, in 10-foot displays alone, we're seeing consistent sales anywhere from $3,000 like the Segway Sunrise to $13,000 like the Visionary Designs iPhone booth and everything in between. The biggest surprise recently has been the growth in hybrid islands. Islands are back in a big way, but there's more emphasis on reducing the crates and the packaging. We're hearing from you that exhibitors want a 20 by 20 or a 30 by 30 or larger islands, but they don't want all the crates. That's music to our ears. Our designers have worked hard to create new island designs, most featuring large format fabric graphics, custom elements, intensive AV, and of course, lots and lots of curves, which you come to expect from us. Finally, we're putting many of our popular inline hybrids on a diet, moving from larger extrusions to smaller ones that have the same capability, but weigh less and pack smaller. You've seen quite a few in Design Monday recently, and you'll be seeing even more this year and next. The metal isn't the only element changing. Graphics have gotten bigger and skinnier too. Right, Reed? Reed? That was a nice segue in, Mel. Thank you very much. I um, want to talk a little bit about Silicon Edge graphics and, and where, it's, where it's come from and where it's going. And, and I think, the, 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 first of all, it's no longer the wave of the future. It is here. It's a mainstay on the show floor. Silicon Edge graphics. Are, are not going anywhere except up, up, up. Um, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've spoken with uh, some uh, some IND companies, 
and I've asked them just point blank, you know, do you see a lot of SCG graphics? And the response from every one of them was, it's in every booth that we set up, there's SCG graphics. Now, that's not the Classic is going to get away from, from using Velcro on some of the smaller products, the Magellan Seconds, we have Perfect 10. But because of the metal, ca metal bending capabilities that Classic has, you're going to continue to see more and more curves, more and more cool designs. You're going to see them used in larger spaces. There is definitely a trend towards hiding some of the aluminum, and the SEG profiles help us do that. Um, we've already talked a little bit about lobbies and interiors, um, even, even to the point of taking fine artwork and the dice sub print and a funky shape maybe bent out of an SEG to go as a wall hanging. We're seeing all kinds of odds and ends that are like that. Um, so there's better fabric options all the time. We're seeing more opaques translucence, you can layer things now that you couldn't do before, and ultimately what it boils down to is just some really cool effects that you're getting out of SCG. And, and as, as new extrusions come out through Classic Modul <clears throat> that are able to be bent and do more cool things, you're just simply going to see cooler designs from all our Segway and SCG graphics. And, and it's not just us, it's everywhere. So. Um, with that, Kevin, take over on the technology side. Uh, on the technology and, and, and LED, it's certainly a broad uh, description, and it, it's really intended to be. I'm going to talk a little bit about technology uh, uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, while we don't necessarily develop any technology here outside of, of, of design search, we're, 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 we are, uh, are being asked more and more to integrate it into um, uh, the exhibit design, uh, inline and island and uh, uh, permanent install alike. Uh, current, you know, already for win uh, winter and spring shows in 2003, we're including you know everything from touch screen monitors to uh, Microsoft Surface tables for uh, meeting areas, um, integrating cell phone charging into exhibits. That seems to be a real common uh, uh, call not just within a kiosk, but actually within your exhibit. It's a nice attraction to, to pull someone in. And they make these bundled cords now, which many of you have probably seen, that, 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 that you know, have everything from, a, from, a, from an iPhone, iPad charge to a micro SD to an SD charge. You usually have anywhere from four to six different um, uh, options for charging devices. And you can uh, build them right into the exhibit. And it's just a nice draw for, to get people in. And of course, iPads. Um, I hope by now, uh, you know, Classic's being recognized uh, to a certain degree as having taken iPads very seriously as a you know, vi viable, integrated part of, of what you can do within your trade show exhibit. Whether it's, you know, built into a, a workstation or part of your countertop, freestanding kiosk, um, or even just a handheld for, uh, for lead retrieval, um, we're, we're, we're really pressing forward and we'll continue to press forward um, 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 with that. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that, that that uh, our staff has heard me say a lot about in the last week or so, especially, is, is Apple did a real smart thing. They came out with their new Mini, which is great, but they also at the same time released the new iPad 4, iPad Retina, whatever you want to call it, and it's the exact same dimension. Um, I think they did this really calculated. Um, they wanted to not uh, lose the building market share that they have within the business community for the actual iPad itself, not the Mini, but the actual iPad itself. And the Mini is just, quite frankly, too small to do what a lot of us would, would use it for, for business applications. So I think it was a very smart um, move on, on their part. While the, the Mini is very cool, the uh, iPad is definitely here to stay. Um, you'll hear more about the different iPad uh, 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 kiosks that we've created recently. Uh, a little bit later. LED lighting, um, you know, I, yeah, I would just say it certainly didn't take long. It was only a couple of years ago that, that it was just something that was cool, but that, you know, the impression was not everybody could afford it. Um, really not any, not true any longer. LED lighting is quickly replacing traditional fluorescent lights for many backlighting applications, replacing a lot of halogen lights for cabinet and counter lighting options. But it's really exciting when it's integrated into the exhibit itself as a part of the design element. Uh, programmable LED will certainly be a growing part of what Classic Exhibit Design Process um, uh, uh, is doing in uh, 2013, so keep an eye out for that. 
Jen? Hello, everyone. If you've been on any of the LinkedIn trade show groups lately, uh, you know that iPad solutions are a very, very hot topic. So from lead capturing apps to bold, interesting ways of incorporating them into any design. And while I don't think that the cuteness of the mini will make a big splash at trade shows, uh, no mistake, iPads are here to stay in our industry. And so taking it a step further, if you have an iPad, then an iPad kiosk is a necessity. Just like Barbie and Ken on a first date, you can dress them up or down. And I have to tell you, the classic iPad kiosks are my new boyfriends. They are smart, sexy, you can dress them up, and they always look good on your arm. And Mel will give us a little bit more of an introduction as to what's new with our classic iPad kiosks in a minute. This is Jim, everybody. Um, that's kind of hard to follow. I, I'm not going to tell you about a new girlfriend I have on my arm or anything, <laughs> but uh, I do want to say that the rental business is alive and well. Um, we've had a great year, and we're doing a lot of exciting projects. Um, what we're trying to do is keep up with um, the classic purchase side of things with a lot of the new technology, with SEG graphics and smaller profiles and, and different things. But we're building islands with customization. Um, we've added several new designs that I'm going to share with you in a few minutes. And again, the iPad kiosks continue to be a, a bit, or are definitely a big hit with rentals as well. But I'll be sharing some new designs with you and some other information in a few minutes. Reed? Thanks. Um, a little bit about uh, manufacturers, distributors, the relationships that are out there, some of the things that are um, not as they once were, um, and maybe some realignments. Uh, it, it seems as though, and I don't want to use brand X because with the term exhibit that implies too much. So I'm going to use brand Y <clears throat> and say that with brand Y deciding that uh, they are going to now take the, take the uh, to go down the path of selling to end users, um, over the course of the last few months, I've had a, a number of calls um, from distributors who sold competing products and did not sell classic. And the question is, are, are you going to sell direct? Are you going to open up a website and sell through a website? Or are you going to do a direct sales through your sales office, your manufacturing facility? And the answer is an emphatic no, we are not. Classic Exhibits is committed to our distribution network. That's how we've done business since we started. That's how we're going to continue doing business. There's a two-step distribution process, and, and we believe in it, and it works. Um, if you, the distributor, are successful, then we, the manufacturer, will be successful also. Uh, that's why we encourage you to participate in things like this so that we can spread some... Uh, opinion and maybe a little bit of knowledge. And that's why we encourage you to participate in our Shared Knowledge University training that we have at the Classic Facility in Portland a couple times a year in order to, to better understand what our true abilities are and what our capabilities are. Uh, we're going to be offering another, uh, another Shared Knowledge University after exhibit or so, so be thinking about that. But as, uh, <clears throat> as a new distributor said to me the other day, I started selling brand Y while MASH was still on the air, but since they sell direct to my customers now, I can't do it anymore. So to answer the question again, do we sell to end users? The great big emphatic, no, we do not. Thanks, Reed. All right. You know and we know that iPads are everywhere. They're increasingly being used in trade shows and events, but the solutions, honestly, have been pretty cheesy and incomplete. The few stands on the market are either cheaply made or unbelievably expensive and often not secure. Beginning last spring, we decided to be the leader in that segment, or as we say here, we're all in. Since then, we have introduced 14 iPad solutions ranging from kiosks to back wall extrusion connections and from counter inserts to lockable clamshell. So let's chat about the iPad solutions. 
The MOD 1336 is a great example. It's all aluminum with a curved support post, locking clamshell, integrated wire management, and the swivel stop, which is exclusive to Classic, which allows you to rotate the iPad frame from landscape to portrait. Here are three more, including the MOD 1338, um, a four-headed version with a very affordable 1335, again, all aluminum construction. All come with wire management and two locks with a hinge on the clamshell frame. Using the patent-pended swivel, swivel stock, there are also extrusion-mounted versions that fit um, sorry, that extrusion mounted versions that fit Modul, Agam, Nouveau, and many other extrusions except Octonorm right now, and we can discuss that if you have access to Octonorm extrusion. Oops, let me go back one. There's also the very popular MOD 1312 and the MOD 1314 with wire management, surge protector, and many graphic and accessory options. And finally, there are iPad options for most counters and workstations, either as attachments or as inserts into counters. Still uncertain, here's a brief video highlighting many of the features and benefits with you-know-who as the talking head. Hi, everyone. This is Mel White from Classic Exhibit. About a month or so ago, we shot a video. And in the video, we showed you all of our iPad solutions, both the kiosk and the back wall solutions. Well, we've been very busy since then. We've come up with even more solutions. And I want to show you today four of those solutions, which will be on our website later this afternoon. The first one is the MOD 1335. This is what I'm calling the straight man. The next one is the one MOD 1336, otherwise known as the chiropractor's nightmare. Then there's the MOD 1337, which is the baby bump. And lastly, there's the, the four-headed clamshell solution that we're very, very proud of. This is called Flower Power, and it's got an acrylic shelf in the middle. Now, all, the, all four of these, in addition to the other iPad kiosks that are very similar to this on the in Exhibit Design Search, have certain features. And I want to kind of go over those key features of those particular products. The first one is the actual, the actual clamshells are all locked in clamshells. And we've actually now added all of them now have integrated wire management, both there. And you can see the wire management that feeds the iPad cord down through the front, and then it actually exits on the bottom. They all come with the, the patent pending swivel stop that allows you to rotate the head very easily, as I'm showing you from landscape to, to, from portrait to landscape and back. They're all made of, of aluminum, so they're very lightweight. All of these three right here that you see all weigh 11 pounds, either 10 or 11 pounds. So very lightweight. They're all powder coated in, with silver. The, and then the last feature is the, all of these three right here and then three of the ones on the website. They all come with this carrying case emotionally for about the next month or so, or you can upgrade to a wheeled case. You can see the wheels on the bottom, very similar to kind of a luggage case or a little bit more. If you have any questions about any of our iPad solutions, please give us a call or go to the classic website, go to the design search, and look under the counters and pedestals gallery or the workstation and kiosk gallery. Thanks a lot. Good job, Mel. We've had a lot of fun um, with Mel <laughs> and some of the names she chose. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Ecosystems. I'm going to uh, pinch hit a little bit here. Uh, real, real briefly give you an update on what's going on with um, uh, ecosystems in, in absence of, uh, of Eric Albrecht. Um, in case everybody, uh, just as a real quick recap, um, uh, the relationship between the two companies. Um, Ecosystems is a, is a sister company of Classic Exhibits, um, corporately located in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's where all sales, uh, marketing, design, and accounting happen. Uh, but all production, project management, 
for uh, the entire product line that uh, happens here at the classic exhibits facility. Um, we are a, a, a majority shareholder in their um, uh, in their business, and um, it's a it's a fantastic uh, uh, relationship and a very uh, uh, and a growing segment of, of, of the industry. Um, sales and design. Um, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal, steal something that someone said to me, and I, I had to write this out. I think the following is a great descriptor of ecosystems. They design and they build exhibits that are, quote, unquote, green inside. What does that mean? What that means is as you're looking at an exhibit here, it's design-driven. First and foremost, that's what that, 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 that is the key. You know, long, long gone is the day of, of, of assuming that a, an ecosystems or sustainably built exhibit is, is earthy or crunchy or or however you wanted to, you know, describe it. You have to have, you know, dirt on the floor. I don't know. Um, uh, uh, it, they are design driven. Whether that means, uh, uh, you know, but 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 what you're seeing is the green is on the inside. Price differentiation is not really there anymore. Um, it's really more of a fallacy these days. They're not 25 or 35 percent more. It's actually very competitive. Um, uh, the ecosystems is able to create innovative, sleek, modern, truly stunning exhibits. The only difference is, is the green, the greenness inside, if you will. What makes the green inside? Fabric graphics made of recycled soda bottles, recycled aluminum extrusion from plastic modules, 100% biodegradable infill panels, bamboo countertops, LED lighting. Welcome to Go to Webinar Web Events Maybe. FSC certified trading. Uh, just to an attendee in listen only mode. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. I don't know. Sorry, everybody. I don't know. Let's try again. Sorry, everybody. All right. Um, where I left off was just some highlights of, of what uh, makes green inside. Um, uh, again, price points are really a, a, a misnomer when it comes to green exhibits. Traditionally thought to be at least 25% higher than comparable to comparable exhibits uh, that are not quote unquote green. It's just simply not true. Um, uh, ecosystems uh, offers 100% free design, so you know next time you're 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 on EDS on your website or on ours, uh, definitely take uh, advantage and take a few moments to uh, look at the eSmart galleries and, and and see some of the great options that ecosystems offers um, uh, from a design perspective. Some of which you've seen here at Melvin um, filtering through. So we all know that. New and improved is the single most overused term in marketing. Well, excluding the, but wait, there's more. That said, exhibit design search is new, is new, and improved. If you haven't taken a few minutes to explore the new exhibit design search, we invite you to do so. Throughout the redesign process, we've looked at it through the eyes of an end user and not as a manufacturer or a distributor. We wanted it to be more straightforward, easier to navigate, and less cluttered. Overall, I think we succeeded with the understanding that exhibit design search is not an e-commerce site. These improvements are already on the distributor branded exhibit design search that are out there on the web. If you would like a 30 to 40 minute tips and tricks tour, please contact me. I'm happy to schedule a webinar session for you or your team. In the meantime, here's a video that shows um, a few of the EDS enhancements. My apologies for the bizarre close-up introduction, but when your cameraman, narrator, director, and production assistant, some weird shit happens. Hi everyone, this is Mel White from Class 57. Several weeks ago, we launched a redesign and a revamp to the design search. Today, we rolled out the update and about half the distributor brand of EDS sites. The remaining one will be completed in the next two weeks. I wanted to take a few minutes to review the major changes by navigating with you through Exhibit Design Search on the Classic Exhibit site. So let's get started. On the home page, we streamlined the overall look and feel, making it much more user-friendly. And we've also simplified the search options by adding presets 
like 10 by 10, 10 by 20, 20 by 20, a price drop down menu, and also a drop down where you can go directly to product categories like tabletops, banner stands, rentals, or islands. We've also included a simplified search box where you can go directly and search for kits or for cash, such as things like conference rooms. In the upper right hand corner, there's now a more button. Now the more button appears on every single page within Exhibit Design Search. And by clicking on the more, the more button, you accomplish really two things. First of all, it allows you to navigate to helpful links like frequently asked questions, electrical cord management, and boots regulation, or go directly to product categories like Magellan Hybrid Displays to any other product category on any page within Exhibit Design Search. But it's within the design detail page that you'll see the most dramatic changes that we've made. You'll notice immediately that there is a lot more white space. We've also reorganized the pages and made them much more logical than they were before. You see a lot larger image up at the top along with the additional images of the photo examples. There's also three tabs. There's the design detail tabs and accessories and options and also docs and dims. So we've layered that information so that you have access to that information when you want that information um, at any given time. In addition, as we scroll down, you'll notice that the call to action buttons are much more prominent than they were before. Things like share this design, request a design, and send you more information. Now the audio and the video are still there. They're just relocated in a different spot within the design search on that page. The other thing that we've done within those pages is we've refined how you use the search tools. So within the search options, within that you can click on search options and do a search just like you would before, the same user interface that you saw in the past, but now it's available within any kit design. And you can do a search, and once you do a search, it allows you now, it changes from do a search to refine your search and you can go back in and make changes. The final thing that I want to show you that's very interesting is the ability to go back to um, the home page. There's two ways to return to the home page. You can either click on the reset button, which will take you immediately back to the home button, the home page, or as we've shown before, within the more button, there's an exhibit design search home that will take you to that page as well. There's a lot of other changes that occurred within exhibit design search, but those are the major ones that I wanted to point out. Should you have any questions about Exhibit Design Search, please give me a call. Okay. All right. That's a quick overview of the changes in Exhibit oh, Design I'm happy Search. happy to conduct a thorough review of Exhibit All right. Jim? Okay. Um, as I said earlier, I want to um, go through a few new designs that we've added recently. Some are very basic, um, but uh, kind of cleaned up the gallery with some of the older ones and refreshed it with some new ones. Um, first, I want to say, you know, we design to your specifications. We don't only have the gallery for you to choose designs from, but, you know, give us a call anytime, email me, and we can definitely go through um, specific design um, options for you and for your client. Uh, we have some new inline and um, island exhibits here that I want to run through. First of all, um, we have a 10 foot. No, do not. Let's just. Okay, I'll touch on these things here in a second. Okay. So we have a, a 10 foot unit here that's very simple. Um, back wall with, the, with an arch canopy, tapered counter workstation, and then a, a tapered counter reception or a tapered reception counter out front, and a few halogen lights. And then here we have. Um, a 10-foot unit that is built uh, for uh, silicone edge graphic. And like I said earlier, we're trying to follow that same trend that we're seeing where this is becoming more and more popular. I think in the future you'll see most of our inline exhibits um, that will be uh, built for SEG graphics. The next one is a 10-foot Sacagawea, smaller profile extrusion, which I think looks really good on the uh, for the inlines. Um, it looks less bulky, more streamlined. Um, and we also want to add, continue to add some of the common, the standard products, the classics offering on the purchase side of things. 
here's a 20-foot version of that same thing. Sacagawea, a couple of small curved reception counters out front, which, by the way, those small curved counters are probably the most popular accessory item we have now. Here's a 20-foot version of the FEG um, layout. Uh, it's a full 20-foot single uh, fabric piece that goes across the front, a couple of flat canopies on top, and a couple of uh, curved reception counters out front. Here's a 10 by 30 unit. Um, this is more of our traditional way of, of producing the, the structure. Um, with the uprights and then we add an L-channel extrusion so that the fabric graphics can Velcro tightly in each section uh, to the sides and then over the top of the extrusion and to the back. A couple of counters and a return wall and an arch-shaped canopy. And here's a 20 by 20 island. Again, we have the SEG graphics on the tower, 16-foot tower there with locking storage, uh, several workstations, small and large monitor mounts. And then a real uh, basic and economical 20 by 20. Um, for people that are on a tight budget, this actually gives them a pretty big bang for their buck. It's a 10-foot tower with locking storage, literature shelves, three workstations, and a uh, small curved counter. And then here we go to the iPads, um, I mean the iPad kiosks. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're trying to follow the same um, path that Classic is finding is, is real popular and adding the uh, several different models here. We have uh, the 1237 and 1238, which are coming black and silver. And then we have the RA 1239 that is the basic um, curved upright with a swivel, swivel stop and a dual iPad kiosk. Uh, we just rented several of these here recently, and we're getting a lot of uh, requests for these. And then we have the charging station. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this on our, on our site. Um, and the price is actually coming down on this. Um, this is a very popular item right now. Um, we have several of them in stock. We actually have like eight of these in stock. So if you ever have a, a need for multiple units, these are available, and you can plug in several different iPhone or I mean uh, cell phone models into this. I believe there are how many? We can go up to. You can charge up to essentially. You know, it, it, it works with basically 85 percent of the phones that are out there, um, uh, based upon the different cords that are available. Um, uh, all those uh, those of you who are coming to um, EDPA, uh, take a few minutes while you're there. Um, we're going to have one out by registration. Um, and definitely take a look at it. Uh, it's got the interactive uh, screens on both sides as well as um, 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 the cell phone charging capabilities. But it's as simple as it looks. Three pieces, packed in a crate, um, and they're, they are, they really are. They're just awesome for events, for trade shows. You can, you can put wayfinding programming into those screens. There's, there's so many different things you can do with them. So uh, they are really uh, 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 going to be a hot product for us in um, 2013, both on the rental and the purchase side. And it assembles, it completely assembles without tools. Yep. And uh, just a few other points um, before we, well, first I want to say that um, I'll go through a couple of points here before we, we go to this, uh, this special promotion that we're offering. But just want to make sure that everybody knows, just a reminder, that we do have two galleries, two rental galleries, one without pricing on the regular website, and then we have a wholesale price gallery in the distributor login section. You can go in there and look at all the pricing, including the accessories. So if you look at one of the designs that has, let's say, a small curved counter, you want to replace it with a tapered counter or something like that, you can definitely go in and, and look at the pricing on the accessories and then figure out what it is for the, uh, if you want to mix and match different components from one design to another. But always feel free to call me or email me and I can give you any, any pricing information you need. And also, I um, want to say that uh, we set up every rental. We build these rentals from uh, individual components. These are not pre-packed kits. So in a way, that makes it easier for us to make modifications 
if you ever need design modifications. Um, and we also photograph everything that goes up. We stage everything with graphics if the graphics are available to us. We stage them, take photographs, send them to you so you can send them to your clients. And we have two webcams available for you and your clients. Um, and another quick note, we've added graphic dimensions and crate estimates to most of the designs in the gallery. And we'll continue to keep that updated. And now moving on to a special. Um, we have a pretty exciting special right now that we're offering. Um, it's basically, it amounts to a 10% discount on off the wholesale price of all rentals through February. Um, it's, it's really designed to offset shipping costs. We've had some distributors that have been concerned about shipping costs, especially on the East Coast. Um, and this really helps in offsetting the shipping costs. On this island display that we're showing on this sheet here, um, you save $875 wholesale on that island, which really makes a difference in the shipping costs when you convert that to retail dollars. Uh, one more note real quick. Um, I just want to say that our crew is probably the best group of guys that we've had assembled since we've been doing this. Even though we're seeing a lot of growth, um, it, it just feels like things are so much easier to produce now. And we have uh, like four guys that are experienced that can go out on the road and do supervision. So you may want to think about supervision for some of the uh, larger projects we're doing. It's well worth it. They work hard. They're probably equal to one or two, one and a half to two of the, the labor guys that you see out on the floors quite commonly. And uh, it also uh, helps us assure that everything's being packed up right and that uh, limited damage will occur or hopefully no damage will occur with the rental components when they're shipped back. But thank you all for your business. And uh, please feel free to call me with any questions you have. One last comment for Reynolds, if I can, just um, just to the reminder to everyone, um, the, the classic rental inventory includes two double decks, one that's located here in Portland and one that is permanently located in Las Vegas. So if you need a double deck rental in Las Vegas in particular, um, you'll save tremendously on the shipping cost because it's pulled from that warehouse in Las Vegas. All right. Finally, to, to start to wrap things up, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Shared Knowledge University, and then uh, Kevin's going to kind of talk about EDPA and Exhibitor uh, 2013. Just as far as Shared Knowledge University, we just had our, our fall class about a month or so ago. It was another great event. The people who attended um, certainly gave us really, really positive feedback on what they learned. It's a, it's a, it's a two-day training, two full days of training. People come in the day before um, and either leave that night or leave the next day. We take care of your hotel and your meals and your entertainment, and there's lots of entertainment, but there's also a lot of intensive education, both within the classroom and as far as uh, showing products how they assemble, um, tearing them down. There's a lot of hands-on, a great deal of hands-on that goes on within the, the, the SKU training. Reed and Jen were there at the last one, uh, and it was, it was very exciting. Uh, just a quick reminder, EPA is coming up at the end of this month. Um, if you have not signed up, if you've been um, sitting on the fence as to whether or not to attend, um, I, oftentimes I find that, that, that distributors as a whole um, are, are, are getting more comfortable but still a little bit unsure of, of how EDPA um, can apply and does apply. Um, this is a great, great event and, and a great year to, um, if you want to come for the first time and just dip your toe in the water. And the reason I say that is there's um, going to be some very specific uh, sessions that um, uh, not only speak to certainly the whole industry, but there's, there's, there's one I know very well that um, I'm hosting that is uh, uh, geared just to distributors. Uh, 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 my friend Jay Burkett and, my, and myself will be, will be giving that session. And um, hopefully, uh, for those of you who do come, uh, it will um, help uh, explain and show you uh, some of the great things that EDPA has to offer, not just to transportation suppliers, uh, uh, custom houses, design firms, et cetera, et cetera, but to the distributor base as a whole. Um, uh, it'll be a valuable experience. Um, exhibitor, uh, we are already starting to plan for Exhibitor. It's in the uh, third week of March this year. 
Uh, our, our booth will look uh, 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 different yet the same uh, from last year. Uh, we have read rave reviews from our exhibit last year, and um, we're going to be going along the same lines structurally. Uh, probably do uh, um, some, some, some pretty uh, significantly different things graphically, um, but structurally it's going to be uh, similar. It really created a nice uh, um, uh, platform to work from, um, uh, both working in the booth as well as uh, designing it. So we look to, uh, forward to seeing you all there. Uh, we will have our hospitality suite uh, most likely again this year, and you'll be getting a lot more information on, on that as, as time comes. But um, uh, jumping back, I hope I hope to see uh, as many of you as possible at uh, EDPA uh, coming up here at the uh, end of this month. In Palm Springs? Yeah, it's in, in Palm Springs. So um, uh, definitely actually reach out. If, if any of you are coming, if you wouldn't mind any of you on this uh, that are on this call. If you are coming, please shoot me a quick email that just says, hey, I'm going to be there. Um, just like to get a quick list of, of, of those classic distributors that will be in attendance and uh, and also see if we can't, you know, put something together at all, you know, get a chance to, to see each other while we're out there. I guess finally, as we started and we, we talked about um, light at the end of the tunnel, we'll kind of conclude with the, the, the metaphor of the glass is half full, the glass is half empty. And certainly for us, the, the, the glass is full. Um, for Kevin on every day, it's, it's overflowing. Um, and we have high hopes for the, the rest of this year and certainly in 2013. We feel like we've done a really good job at looking at our product assortment, putting plans and services in place that allow not only us, but our distributors to, to succeed as a group. And we hope you agree. We're always looking for feedback, and we always want to hear from you. Um, and if we're not on the right track, what we hope is that you'll you'll let us know so that we can re-engineer and revamp the size of the glass to make sure it fits exactly what you need. All right, Reed. Yes, Mel. Uh, you were going to talk. Well, let me let's kind of wrap up here, and um, we'll go to questions. And I know some people have already asked some questions. I've got to escape out of here for a second. To bring up the that section of it again, if you'll give me just a second here, and we'll start answering some of those questions that you've entered into the, the question pane. Just a second here. I'm gonna and I'm gonna be to be fair to people. I'm gonna start all the way at the top. All right. The first question is, does the wheel case fit? Oh, no. That's the, let me go back. I have to go the other direction. When is an extreme training? I think we're missing some of them that asked in the beginning. Oh, there's one. Hey, okay. Does the wheel case fit all the single iPad kiosks? Is it a hard case? And I'll answer that one. Is it, it there's really, there's, I'm going to give you three answers for that. So the MOD, 1312 and 1313, those are the, the, the ones that we, we introduced first. Those are the ones that have kind of the, the, the thicker post on there. Those only fit in a in the, the wheeled rotor molded cases. However, they do come in a, in a corrugated shipping box. You can't ship that box a lot, but it is it does have um, foam padding within it, but you can buy a wheeled case. All of the uh, iPad stands that um, <laughs> That are have the single post or, or multiple posts, with the exception of the, the the flower power one, will all fit in the the, the, the fabric, the kind of semi um, hard sided fabric case. And right now, that case comes with them. The non wheeled one comes with it. Um, that's a promotional case. Once we run out of those promotional cases, they'll fit in the same case with the same dimension, except it has wheels. There will be an extra charge in order to get the the wheeled cases within that one. The last one, the four-headed, the flower power one, has to go into a rotor molded case. And that was a question by Tommy. All right. I'm going to, uh, uh, Brad has a question kind of on the same topic. Uh, within those, uh, uh, he has a client that has an iPad MOD 13 and 14, and he wants the ability to put biographics on the front. Absolutely, not a problem, Brad. Um, and what branding applications are available for the new pole design? Um, uh, 1333. Um, it, it, pretty much all the same branding that you would see. If you look in EDS and you look at the galleries, you'll see that there's uh, uh, standoff graphics available. There's uh, 
uh, direct print sensor graphics. There's shroud graphics that go around the head of the iPad. All of those are available. All of those are also available within the whole version of them. Um, we just need to know um, at the front end uh, what, what you would like to do on that. We have not added those accessories yet to those. Those are brand new, and so we haven't really gone through and, and um, added all of the uh, uh, the jewelry, as our design department would call it, um, to the new uh, pole versions of them. But but yes, rest assured, you can use any of the uh, very same graphic accessories. The, the, the difference on that, Brad, just so you know, is the ones that come standard the extrusion it's used, it's a smooth extrusion. It doesn't have uh, doesn't have the groove or the channel in it. When you add accessories, we just have to start with a different. Um, uh, it's the same round one, but it has channels either uh, either on one side or two side, and then we can add those accessories. That's the only thing we need to know on the front end. Um, it, it is can you make those changes after the fact? Not really, but if you, if your client knows that they want graphics on it in some kind, other than on the faceplate of the, the clamshell, we just need to know in the beginning. I have a question about when the next SKU event will be. Um, uh, don't have a date set just yet, but uh, uh, more than likely it will be a post-exhibitor show. So exhibitor show is the third week of uh, March. My guess would be before the end of April there will be another SKU. Um, we probably won't do one in between now and then. Um, uh, because we do have a different show. So I would guess sometime in April, like last year, is when we had it around the third week of April, we'll probably do it then again. All right. Um, Wendy is asking as far as the, the, the cell phone charging stations, Jim, she's asking is that a monitor or a graphic holder, or can you do both? Uh, we could do both. It is a monitor. It's 32-inch uh, monitors back-to-back. -back. So there's uh, two monitors. They're LED screens, and they're back-to-back. -back. They're super thin. Um, they fit in there real nice. We could, you know, we could remove those and actually just uh, apply a graphic. We do. We have, a, we have a conversion kit for it that actually, if you pull those monitors out, you can make those back-to-back um, -back, uh, SCG graphics front and back. And because of the shape of that upper section, that being half rounds on the ends, you can bury some lights in there and it turns the whole thing into a, a really, really cool fabric light box. Um, there's another question about rentals from Chuck. What is the supervision rate for rentals for? Um, okay, it's based. The supervision rate is really based on seventy-five dollars per hour, and then um, we add the travel cost to that. So, you know, it, it, the seventy-five an hour is the uh, standard rate. So really, it's it's kind of quoted on a per uh, per show uh, on an individual basis. Really, we just have to find out where the show is and. and Factor in all the travel costs to that. Uh, There's a question in here from uh, Chris Griffin. Um, can you scroll down? I want to start at the top. No. Speak to what you're seeing as far as lead times now. Um, not just the normal expanding contact strings, but uh, the trend of clients regularly now giving us less and less time for project fulfillment. Um, if so, okay, Chris. As far as uh, less less time for fulfillment, here, here's the interesting thing. Um, yes, I agree with you. There's less and less time being given from the time the project is started. But what in, what's interesting is we're seeing people plan further in advance. So. And in a way, you know, we're appreciative of that. We're seeing people design further in advance. Um, we're seeing uh, uh, um, orders even come in a little bit sooner than 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 later, um, which which is a little bit better. But details are still slow to come in. So we may be able, we may get, you know, have an end user who says, "Yeah, we're ready to pull the trigger on this," but then you don't actually get, uh, you know, uh, final details really allow you to work um, until it's crunch time. But um, but interestingly, we, we're seeing a lot more focus on designing in advance. So yes, we're seeing um, lead times shrink from the time the PO is, 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 is sent to us. But oftentimes, we've been able to do a lot of that work up, uh, um, uh, in front during the quoting process and during the design process. So it's been less. Painful, um, but we can't really 
set on our laurels there and think that that's going to um, always be the case. But we are seeing shrinking lead times. I think it's worth noting as a reminder of how our rush charges or lead times work. Um, and we work very differently than our competitors do in that, and many of you already know this, but it's just kind of a quick reminder. If we're able to produce something in less than the stated lead time, whether it's 10 days, 15 days, or 20, 20 days, and it doesn't cause us to go into overtime or it doesn't require us to do any kind of um, expedited shipping in any way of materials coming to us, we're happy to do it in that reduced lead time, whether it's seven days or six days or whatever, um, and we won't charge you. you. You will always know if we're facing expedited or, or overtime charges in the RN, that that's the only char time that we'll charge you rush fees. So we try to work around that all the time. And it comes up at the front end. We will, we will be transparent about it. Um, this just happened. Um, very large, very, very large order. Uh, multiple uh, workstation kiosks. And at the front end, we said it could be this much to do that um, and to get it done expedited because we had five days essentially to produce about 42 kiosks. Um, and so we said we, we, we were very upfront with what it could be so the client was aware of that but then we actually only billed what the actual number was which was almost half of what the original uh, uh, expedite fee could have been. So. Um, as far as the, 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 the lead times, though, real quick, one thing I forgot to mention on this, and forgive me if Mel already mentioned this, but um, you know, we have been looking at adding to, changing, and will continue to add to and change our quick ship uh, availability. Um, and, and where we can add to that gallery, we will, within the hybrids, within really any of the product lines. So if we're seeing that we can you know, add something to an eight-day turnaround time, um, we're going to do that to, to help you know, fit some of the, these, these faster lead times. Yeah, and yeah, we, we've actually, we've gone through the, the quick ship program and made um, a number of changes here recently and added some products there. Um, uh, a comment by Chuck, and I just want to read it because it, it's very gratifying. Hey guys, just love the new exhibit design search architecture, but more importantly, our clients love it. Thank you very much, Chuck. Uh, Tanya, you, you had a follow-up question about the, the, the wheeled cases. And I'm going to clarify because there's two different wheel cases. There's the, the kind of uh, rectangular narrow wheel case that um, our tabletops go in and most of the iPad kiosks go in. And you're asking a question about the four-headed one. That one won't fit in the narrow one with wheels because the base is too big for it. It will fit, but it does fit in the rotomolded case. Uh, and I hope that answers your, your question. Let me see if there's any other last questions here. Oh. If anyone wants to attend EDPA, this is from uh, Brennan, if anyone wants to attend EDPA conference, how do you get information on the hotel and how do you register? Just go to the, um, the EDPA website and, and click on the link to the annual meeting and it's, it's, it's all right there. Um, there is a discounted rate um, through the event uh, um, that's through the Marriott there. So. Um, the one thing I will tell you, uh, for those of you who are looking to attend, um, if you do decide to stay off property, uh, totally get that, totally understand. Um, but it is a little difficult if you've ever been to that area to be off property um, because they are so the properties are so self-contained. So just uh, uh, forewarned, uh, is forearmed, and, and, and that um, if it costs a few extra dollars to stay at the Esmeralda. Um, that are made down the street, um, you'll probably uh, save that uh, uh, twofold in, in, in uh, transportation to and from. And I think that's all the questions, and conveniently, we're right at one hour. So thanks to everybody. Yeah, we've answered that one. So thanks to, thanks to everybody for participating. The next um, town call meeting will be at the end of January. And if you have any suggestions on how you'd like the meetings conducted, the things you'd like us to share, please let us know. We we want these to be as productive as possible and to be to make sure that everybody feels as if they're having a chance to um, contribute and also that the information that you're getting is relevant and um, and important to your business. And truthfully, all all criticisms, suggestions, you name it, are welcome. So we want to continue to make these uh, uh, better and, and make them as valuable as possible to you all.
Thank you very much, and, and have a great rest of the year and a very, very successful 2013. Thank you. Take care, all.